Hello everyone and welcome to part 4 of the skull series. In this video I'll describe the anatomy of the lateral skull. If you still haven't watched part 1, 2 and 3, I request you to please watch those videos before you continue with this video. So let's begin. lateral skull or norma lateralis. There are nine bones that we can identify from this view, starting on from the frontal bone, the parietal bone, the temporal bone, the squamous part of the occipital bone, the zygomatic bone right here, also the greater wing of the sphenoid bone and the maxilla, the nasal bone, and the mandible. So these are the nine bones that we can identify from this view. Now moving on to the features that we can identify. So first of all, the temporal lines. This prominence that you see right here on the squamous part of the temporal bone, where it separates from the mastoid part of the temporal bone, this one. This is in continuation from the inferior temporal lines. So the inferior temporal line in its posterior part, it turns downwards and forwards and becomes continuous with the supramastoid crest. So this prominence you see on the squamous part of the temporal bone, this is the supramastoid crest. And this supramastoid crest, it further, it continues downwards and forwards with the posterior root. This is the posterior root coming right here. And it gets continuous anteriorly with the posterior root of the zygomatic arc. Moving on to the next feature that is the zygomatic arc. The zygomatic arc is formed by the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. This is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone and by the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. This is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone whereas this is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. And this zygomatic arc, this arc is crossed by a suture that is known as the zygomatico temporal suture. This is the zygomatico temporal suture right here, this one. This is the zygomatico temporal suture. The supramastoid crest coming anteriorly and moving forwards with the posterior root this is the posterior root of the zygomatic arc and this is continuous with the posterior root forming the zygomatic arc. Above the zygomatic arc is a fossa that is known as the temporal fossa. This temporal fossa it is filled with the temporalis muscle whereas inferior to the arc is the masseter muscle and you can easily feel these muscles when you clench your teeth. The point at the anterior end of the upper border. This is the anterior end of the upper border. This is the upper border of the arc. And at the anterior end, at this point, this is the juggle point. This is known as the juggle point. Posteriorly, the arc is continuous with the squamous part of the temporal bone by two roots, the anterior root and the posterior root. This right here. As you can see, this one. This is the anterior root, whereas this is the posterior root that is continuous with the supramastoid crest. The anterior root and the posterior root. So these are the two roots of the arc that connect the posterior end of the arc to the squamous part of the zygomatic bone. Now on the lower border, this is the lower border of the arc and on this border, first of all, this is the mandibular fossa. The mandible 
it is connected to the arc or to the skull through this fossa and this is known as the mandibular fossa or the articular fossa now anterior to the fossa here on the lower border of the arc is a tubercle and this is known as the articular tubercle and posterior to the fossa posterior to the fossa is one more tubercle and it is known as the post glenoid tubercle I'll show you clearly if we remove the mandible well I can't remove this cartilage from the model but you can clearly see right here is another tubercle this was the articular tubercle and posterior to the fossa right here this is the post glenoid tubercle anterior to the fossa is the articular tubercle posterior to the fossa is the post glenoid tubercle moving on to the next feature that is the external acoustic meatus this is the external acoustic meatus and it opens just below the posterior root of the zygoma the zygomatic arc it is also known as the zygoma so below the posterior root is the external acoustic meatus and the anterior inferior as well as the lower part of the posterior margin they are formed by the tympanic plate these margins they are formed by the tympanic plate whereas the posterior superior margin this is the posterior superior margin it is formed by the squamous part of the temporal bone so the squamous part of the temporal bone is forming the posterior superior margin of the external acoustic meatus. The next feature is the supramiatal triangle or it's also known as the McCabe's triangle. As the name suggests, it is the supramiatal triangle. So that would be right above the external acoustic meatus. I'll explain the boundaries now. The supramiatal triangle, it is bounded above by the supramastoid crest this is the supramastoid crest coming up right here anteriorly the triangle is bounded by the posterior superior margin of the meatus so this is the posterior superior margin right here this is the posterior superior margin so anteriorly the triangle is bound by the posterior superior margin and above by the supramastoid crest and behind by a tangent to the posterior superior margin so the tangent would be like this coming up right here this so this triangle that you see this is the supramiatal triangle or also known as the McCabe's triangle so this is the supramiatal triangle right above the external acoustic meatus and also we can identify the supramiatal spine the supramiatal spine it lies at the anterior and inferior end of the triangle <coughs> so the anterior inferior end of the triangle would be right here this one so this is the triangle the supramiatal triangle and the anterior inferior end the anterior inferior end that is this one so here lies the supramiatal spine this one this is the supramiatal spine moving on to the next feature that is the mastoid part of the temporal bone this is the mastoid part of the temporal bone and it lies just posterior to the external acoustic meatus it is continuous anterior superiorly with the squamous part of the temporal bone and posteriorly it articulates with the parietal bone through the parietomastoid suture this is the parietomastoid suture and it also articulates with the squamous part of the occipital bone through the occipitomastoid suture the point where these sutures meet the parietomastoid suture and the occipitomastoid suture they meet at the lateral end of the lambdoid suture right here and the point where all these sutures meet this is known as the astrion so astrion is the point where three sutures that is 
the parietomastoid suture, the occipitomastoid suture, and the lateral part of the lambdoid suture where they meet. This is known as the astern. A breast-like projection from the lower part of the mastoid part is known as the mastoid process. This is the mastoid process that is present at the lower part of the bone. It is posterior inferior to the external acoustic meatus and it appears during the second year of life at the anterior aspect of the mastoid process. This is the anterior aspect of the mastoid process right here. This is known as the tympano-mastoid fissure. This process, the mastoid process, it also bears a foramen that is known as the mastoid foramen. Right here, this is the foramen that is present at the mastoid process or just near to the mastoid process. The mastoid foramen, it transmits a mastoid emissary vein to the sigmoid sinus, a small branch of the occipital artery and the posterior meningeal artery to the duramater. So these are the three structures that are transmitted from the mastoid foramen. The next feature is a needle-like thin long projection from the norma basalis or also known as the base of the skull. So this feature it originates from the base of the skull and it is situated anteromedial to the mastoid process. So that is the mastoid process anteromedially that would be right here. This this structure is known as the steloid process. This is the steloid process that is situated anteromedial to the mastoid process. The apex or the tip of the process, it is usually hidden from view by the posterior border of the ramus of the mandible. This is the mandible and this is the ramus of the mandible. Now the posterior border this posterior border it hides the tip of the slide process. Moving on to the next feature that is the temporal fossa. This right here this is the temporal fossa. Now I'll tell you the boundaries of the fossa. Above the boundaries are formed by the superior temporal lines. So the superior temporal lines, they are somewhere here, like that, and the upper boundary of the fossa is formed by the superior temporal line. Below, it is formed by the upper border of the zygomatic arc. So this is the zygomatic arc, and the upper border, that is this one, so it's coming up like that. This is the upper border, then coming on to the lower border. The lower border is formed by the upper border of the zygomatic arc and by the infratemporal crest of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. So this is the sphenoid bone and that is the infratemporal crest right here, this one. This is the infratemporal crest of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone right here. So these two structures, they form the borders of the temporal fossa below. And these two fossae, they communicate through the gap right here. The anterior wall of the fossa is formed by the zygomatic bone. So the anterior wall, this is the anterior wall of the fossa and it is formed by the zygomatic bone and by some parts of the frontal bone some parts of the frontal bone and the sphenoid bone. So moving on to the next feature, can you guys identify an H? Yeah, you heard it right, an H. Well, I'll help you. So right here, this structure, it does resemble an H, right? This one. So this H that you see here is actually a junction or a meeting point where certain bones they meet. The frontal bone, the temporal bone or the squamous part of the temporal bone, the greater wing of the ethmoid bone 
as well as the parietal bone. So the point where all these bones meet is known as the terion. So this structure, this is terion. Deep to the terion lies the middle meningeal vein, the anterior division of the middle meningeal artery and the stem of the lateral sulcus of the brain. So all these structures can be found at the terion. And one more point that is terion is the thin part of the skull. You know, usually in roadside accidents, you know, usually in roadside accidents, the anterior division of the middle meningeal artery, it may be ruptured. That may lead to a clot formation between the skull bone and the dura mater. The clot that is formed right here because of the injury to the meningeal artery, it compresses the motor area of the brain. So when this side of the brain gets damaged or this or the motor area of this region gets damaged, the activities of the other side would be suppressed and leading to paralysis. The next feature is the infratemporal fossa and the pterygopalatine fossa. For these two structures, I'll make a separate video, each video for each structure. Moving on to the attachments on the lateral skull, the temporal fascia is attached to the superior temporal line. So right here is the superior temporal line and the temporal fascia is attached right here. And inferiorly the fascia it attaches to the outer lips and the inner lips of the upper border of the zygomatic arc. The next muscle that is the temporalis muscle, it arises as a whole from the temporal fossa. Now beneath the muscle right here would be the temporalis muscle and just under it so beneath the temporalis muscle lies the deep temporal vessels and nerves and also right above the external acoustic meatus so that would be right here the middle temporal vessels they produce vascular markings on the temporal bone right here just above the external acoustic meatus the medial surface and the lower border of the zygomatic arc they give origin to the masseter muscle that would be right here moving on to the next feature that is the lateral ligament of the temporomandibular joint so first of all where is the temporomandibular joint this is the temporal bone this is the mandible and this is the mandibular fossa and this joint is known as the temporomandibular joint now the ligament of this joint the lateral ligament of the joint is attached to this articular tubercle that is present at the lower border of the zygomatic arc. So moving on to the next group of muscles that are the sternocleidomastoid, splenius capitis and longissimus capitis. So these muscles are arranged in the same order as I mentioned them from before to backwards and they are present at the lateral side of the mastoid process and the gap that you see between the zygomatic arc and the skull this gap right here the gap between the zygomatic arc and the skull this one this gap it transmits tendon of the temporalis muscle the deep temporal vessels and the deep temporal nerves so all these structures they pass through this gap and also this gap acts as a communicator between the temporal fossa and the infratemporal fossa there are a few more points that I forgot to mention and those are the tympanomastoid fissure that is present at the anterior aspect of the mastoid process right here and this structure it transmits the auricular branch of the vagus nerve. It transmits the auricular branch of the vagus nerve. And also the zygomatical temporal foramen. Where is the zygomatical temporal foramen? This is the zygomatical temporal foramen. And this structure, it transmits the nerve of the same name and a minute artery. So that was all about the lateral skull and if this video was helpful do give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe the channel so you do not miss out on the later videos. Have a good day.